Okay, good day. Now start a new plan here. I don't care about the uh, template particularly. <clears throat> now let's draw this house out. This, this, is, this comes up from time to time at Chief Talk and also at Home Talk. So I think it's worth making a video tutorial of. I'm just going to draw this basic bump out kind of a thing here. Of course, we'll get the automatic hip roofs. Just for fun, I'm going to tile the screens, shift F6, there we go, okay. You can kind of watch this as it develops. By the way, that command I use, shift F6, is under, uh, I think, window, yeah, window. Shift F6, tile vertically, so it's just open windows, it'll place them side by side on the desktop. Okay. Now, we want to want some gables. I'm going to open this wall here. Program it to be, whoops, full gable, and it is. I don't know if Pro can shift select walls like you can in Chief. Let's see if you can. Okay. To a degree. I don't think you can do this in all uh, Home Designer programs, but in Pro you can. Okay. So there's a basic setup. And uh, let's go ahead and, and fill this out with, uh, let's build a foundation. Some of you are going to bump into this. We'll go over to build, whoops, floor, build foundation. I don't care what kind of foundation. This one, I just want a foundation. I'm going to derive it from the uh, floor above. This is a tutorial on foundations, so I'm just, I just thought it would be nice if we had a foundation. And also, let's go... Uh, Dress this out a little bit more and create a train plane. Uh, that looks about right. Train specification. I don't want this 20 and an eighth inches below the floor zero of the house. I want it about six inches below, so I'm just going to set it at six. Well, okay, we'll set it to 12. Double click on this, open it. I'll set it to 12. I want to see a little reveal of the foundation, and the setting it to 6 didn't give me any reveal. Well, I'm still seeing siding. All right, I want some foundation reveal. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't rehearse this, as you can see. Let's try 18 inches below zero. Okay, there's a little concrete. That's all I wanted to achieve here. Okay. I meant to zoom out on this screen. Okay, that's fine. Now, <clears throat> for our bump out, we don't want for our bump out, we don't want foundation sticking out, so I'm going to manually edit that and just pull this back. Like that. And now we have some uh, space underneath the uh, foundation. If you want, See, it also creates a hole in the terrain. I noticed that in, in, in your posted image. And that's a setting. Uh, let's go up to the first floor. Coming up to the first floor has no particular significance except what I'm going to do next is on the first floor. I don't want this bump out quite as pronounced, so I'm just going to pull that back. That's about right. I just want a little bit of a bump out. Now I'm going to fix the terrain. I'm going to click on the terrain over here and open it for specification. And see right here, it says... Hide terrain intersected by building. I'm going to uncheck that. That's usually on by default. And now there's no hole under the bump out. Let me get a better handle on that. Okay. Now what I was talking about, Elovia was talking about uh, um, using a soffit, and it's perfect. that's perfectly fine. But from what, from what your picture shows, uh, it looks like to me it'd be you'd be better served by just having a I'm gonna pull this wall across. Will make any difference in the roof generation or anything. But it does create me a room here, which then I can then specify. I'm gonna hit the tab key and open this dialog box for this space. Yeah. I'm gonna raise I'm gonna uncheck default and raise that up eighteen inches. I'll leave the ceiling alone. And voila, we have, uh, we change the camera type here. Uh, 
well, I don't see the kind I want. Okay, I was looking to uh, one of the different. I wanted the. Um, there we go. Oh, I see. I'm in the wrong camera type. My bad. All right, we'll go with this. Now you can see that uh, by using this interior wall, exterior wall, excuse me, I got the siding to then come in under there, and I've got one little anomaly right there on the corner. Uh, the software just isn't perfect, you know. I, just, you know, and it's no shocking. It's not shocking to me. I've been using it for almost 20 years. And I expect some sort of a little anomalies like that. We'll handle that later. Let's put some uh, windows in here. <coughs> Let's see. Where are the window tools? There they are. And we didn't talk about windows, so I'm not going to worry about this too much. I just have them in there for kind of, kind of reference. You can see the siding on the inside. That's okay. Now... I'm going to put a door right here. Oops, I think it's a window. My bad. There we go. Win a door. And then we'll open it for specification and make it a, not a hinge, but a doorway. And we can make that door opening as wide or as narrow as we want. I just like that. Let's take a look at that from the inside. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm going to drag this doorway's bottom to the floor. See, it followed the floor of the, of the little tiny room there. Now, now we've made a hole. But it doesn't show on the outside. It just kind of shows on the inside. <clears throat> So, you know, this is a little a little beyond the pale for the software, but you, you work with how it works and get your stuff done. I'm going to make these a little bit larger windows. Make them five-foot windows. Okay, now this space here, we need to, I'll probably just apply a, a soffit to it. Go to plan view here. Zoom in. I'm going to go ahead and name this room here. I, I think it's a good idea to name rooms. I'm just going to name it something innocuous like uh, Nook. And I'm in a larger space, we'll just call it Living. <clears throat> I think the material settings for Nook and Living Room are the same, so you see the same flooring on there. Uh, I don't want those stupid dimensions to show, so I'm going to turn those off. Get the R key to go to rooms and turn off dimensions. I never use those. Almost never. Sometimes I'll have a client that wants me to use them. <coughs> okay. And obviously this is all malleable. Now, if you're worried about the uh, siding showing in here, the way to handle that is to break the, use a brake tool and break this off from its parent wall over here. Now we can take this wall Go to the Materials tab and the Exterior Wall, here right there, and put uh, type in a D and put in Drywall. I think, okay, Drywall showing up out here. Maybe that's not, it, that's up to you. You can put a soffit here with soffit on it. Or I was hoping that wouldn't go down below, but it has, so we'll just go ahead and put that back. I told you I didn't rehearse this. I'm just kind of doing it on the fly. Okay, a little bit of siding in here. I, I, I can't see it, but you can see it from the outside, so I think it's kind of a plus. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to go to the soffit tool. Whoops, that was a mistake. Put a soffit here. You can see it comes in up here. That's no big deal. Slick. Like just put it down here. Since I'm demonstrating, I'm not being very all, all that precise, but I'm showing you various ways to get things done. Now, this soffit is, doesn't need to be that thick, obviously, and it doesn't need to be in the room. <clears throat> so I'm going to drag it. 
press the control key, then left click on the move handle and move it into the wall some. And then pull it back even with the wall, like that. There. <clears throat> and if I want base mold there, uh, I'd probably just put base mold on the soffit. You can see that the soffit doesn't show outside over, over here. But it does show. And in here, might as well go ahead and do that. We'll open this soffit, moldings, add new, and uh, core catalogs, architectural, molding, base molding. I'm, I, I don't care what it is. I'm just going to put something on it. I don't want it up at the top, of course. I want it from the bottom. Okay. And... If I was doing this for real, I would make this base mold match that base mold, but you get the idea. <clears throat> but there's your basic setup, and, this, and you can see that it's all pretty uh, adjustable. Now, the last thing is, we got the inside looking presentable, and we'll handle this little, little guy right there. Uh, see, I need to uh, click on this screen to make it act active, and then... Zoom in. Okay. And in plan view, whoops, I need to go to this screen. And in plan view, that's right there. I'm going to go uh, to the basement here. Turn on the reference display. Okay, so that problem is right along in here. Let's put a soffit there. See how that works. Okay, you can see it came in a little high, so I'm just going to click on it and drag it down to closer to where I need it. This is called the Z-axis. Up and down in, in CAD software is called the Z-axis. Uh, left and right is X, and up and down the screen is Y, and then up and down in the third dimension is Z. I'm going to pull that over. That's looking a little bit better. I don't care if it lines up with the foundation or not. This is just a fix. I'm going to move it over just a little bit more. See that red line in the reference there? That should line. Okay, that's fairly close. You want it exact. You have to zoom in. You get a little bit finer control as you zoom in. A little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. <clears throat> uh, it's far from perfect, but it's reasonably okay. Uh, I'm going to switch to this screen, use the eyedropper and get the siding on and put it on the soffit. Now, where's my soffit? There it is. You can see that it's fairly close here. I just need to come back with it until these lines line up a little bit more. Whoops, a bit too much. <clears throat> and also you can make minute adjustments with this tool here. It's called Transform Replicate. And we're going to move the selected op object, which is a soffit. I'm going to move it to uh, the right X, 1 16th. Okay, that's closer. It needs to be moved back also. So I'm going to move it another 16th, 1 16th to the right. And up screen, 0.125, that's an eighth of an inch. A little bit, okay, that's perfect there. I need to move it back a little more. That's positive Y. Uh, let's go 0.5, that's a half inch. Oops, I lost that for some reason. I'm going to hit Control Z. Okay, that may be as good as I can get it. I don't need it quite that thick, I don't think. Yeah. So that's that's a fix. Uh, is it perfect? No. But, you know, if you want perfection, then you're going to have to uh, leave the physical realm <laughs> that we live in because uh, there's very little things in the physical universe that are, are perfect. But that's reasonably, uh, you know, that's reasonably close. So that's what I meant about fixing, fixing holes with soffits. And this illustrates the door thing. 
and I realize this is kind of a uh, patched together and so forth, but uh, this is this is how I get things done, and I hope it's you find it of use to you. And this is a uh, this type of architectural construct comes up all the time, all the time. These are the basic things that you do to to uh, get a product. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to spin around. Where's the camera tools? They disappeared. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. I just wanted... Yeah, I got a little white spot there. Let me see if I can fix that. We're just jerking this over. Okay. Like I say, it's not perfectly glorious, but if I worked on this a little bit more, I could, I could get it better. I don't know if I can make it perfect, but I can certainly make it uh, better than it is. But for a tutorial, I think it's perfectly good. Addresses the concerns and shows some solutions. Okay, thank you for uh, your kind attention. Good day.